LTE Network Topology Evolved Packet Core EPC, also known as the System Architecture Evolution SAE Core. It's a simplified all IP network architecture. It supports higher throughput and lower latency. Supports mobility between legacy 3GPP based systems, but also non 3GPP systems like WiMAX and CDMA 2000. Mobility Management Entity, MME. This controls the signaling between the UE and the core network. It handles the establishment, maintenance, and release of radio bearer services. It's also responsible for paging and tracking the UE between calls and selecting the proper SGW, the serving gateway, upon connection. It acts as the termination point for ciphering protection and is therefore the point of lawful interception of signaling. Serving Gateway, SGW. This route data packets maintains the data connection for intern enode B handovers as well as intersystem handovers between LTE and GSM UMTS networks. It stores UE contacts, for example, bearer service parameters and routing information, and is the main junction between the radio access network and the core network. Packet Switch Data Network Gateway, PDN, provides connectivity for the UE to external packet data networks. It allocates IP addresses for UE and enforces quality of service. Maintains the mobility connection between LTE, UMTS, and GSM systems, and non 3GPP systems like WiMAX and CDMA 2000. The enhanced UTRAN is simply a collection of E node Bs networked together. It's responsible for radio resource management, header compression, security, and connectivity to the evolved packet core. Enhanced node B contains the radio and antenna equipment to link the UE and the LTE core network via the RF error interface. The practical equivalent is to the BTS in GSM and node B in UMTS. However, the functionality is more robust in LTE. The radio controller functionality now resides in the E node B, resulting in a more efficient, less latent network. For example, mobility is governed by the E node B instead of the BSC or RNC. Home Subscriber Service, HSS. This database is similar to the HLR in GSM and UMTS core network, and it contains subscriber-related information supporting call control and session management. It's primarily involved in authentication, authorization, security ciphering, and also can provide user location details. Policy Control and Charging Rules Function, PCRF. It's responsible for policy control decision making. It provides the quality of service authorization to decide how data will be treated with respect to the user's subscription. The Serving GPRS Support Node, SGSN. It interconnects the LTE, UMTS, and GSM networks for increased mobility. Now let us take a look at LTE in OpPCS. First, we can begin with looking at various thematic maps available to the LTE SFO. We can look at thematics for elements such as physical cell ID, uplink downlink channels, vendor, as well as parameter configuration elements. Here we have antenna, rad center, beam width, mechanical and electrical tilt. Let's take a look at the antenna beam width map. This will generate a new map color coding the cells by their antenna beam. If we zoom in on this individual site, we can use our map tools to take a look at specific elements about these cells. We can see the cell parameters, the neighbor cells, the physical cell ID information, as 
well as antenna information per cell. So let's take a look at this one cell here. And we're going to have the physical as well as network parameters available to this cell. Most of these parameters are physical, coming from the planning tool, but we also have interest handovers as well as neighbor information. Check back again next time for more LTE, EMTS, and GSM.